Are we set, guys? So the last one. All secure. Sounds great. Let's go diving. Zombie shell! What is it, kids? What's going on? Can you help us find where SpongeBob SquarePants lives? But we can't find Bikini Bottom. You mean somebody lost a Bikini Bottom? Bikini Bottom is where SpongeBob SquarePants lives. SpongeBob? I never heard of SpongeBob. I've heard of a tube sponge. And I've seen a vase sponge. There are barrel sponges, too. Of course, but there is no SpongeBob. We've seen them on TV. Let's get to the bottom of this. This is Jean-Michel Cousteau. Is this uh, Steven Hillenberg? Well, Steve, I hear you have discovered a new sponge species called Bob Square Pants. I want to see it. Oh. You created SpongeBob, and to see him, I have to turn on the TV. Well, let's have a look. Ah, so this is Bikini Bottom. And this guy's SpongeBob, Jean-Michel. Quite a happy-go-lucky fellow. Yep, he's always a kid at heart. Well, Steve, the sponges I've seen over the years don't have this personality, so to speak, and they don't resemble the square kitchen sponge. But they're not just blobs either. They're full of energy and keep busy. When I created SpongeBob, I took a lot of creative license. A main character just staying in one place that looks like a blob isn't very exciting to watch. True, but sponges are important. They are the filters of the sea. Some long and narrow, some short and fat. Uh, they can get bigger than two feet in diameter. <laughs> These creatures have been cleaning our oceans for over 540 million years. And our bathrooms. Well, most of the sponges we use in our homes don't come from the ocean anymore. Right, those are fake sponges made out of cellulose. I always think of SpongeBob as being a real sponge. He's just square. And sponges have quite an appetite themselves. Ooh. I'll say, SpongeBob can't get enough ice cream. Two sponges filter food from the water. They aren't picky. They go with the flow. Sponges are really odd animals. I mean, most people think that they're plants. I think they're so unusual and special. In fact, researchers believe that chemicals in sponges may cure cancer and other diseases. This is SpongeBob's best friend, Patrick Starr, as in Sea Star. Glad to hear you call him a sea star, not a starfish. Sea stars are animals related to sea urchins, not fish. They have tube feet that act like tiny suction cups. Hey, I didn't see any there on Patrick. Do you know how long it would take to draw those feet, oh, Jean-Michel? OK, OK. At first glance, sea stars seems like harmless slowpokes, but don't let them fool you. Well, that was the inspiration for Patrick. Sea stars seem kind of dumb and slow, but in reality, they are very active and aggressive. When a potential meal is at hand, some chase their prey, fight, even run away. Yeah, they're incredibly mobile. They control population of other species on the reef by eating them, keeping things in balance. Well, then Patrick is definitely true to his kind. He loves to eat. And their eating habits are strange. Get this. They can poke their stomachs through their mouth and digest their prey outside their bodies. Ooh, sounds pretty messy. Don't try this at home, kids. At least not while your parents are watching. Steve, Steve. What? Well, oh, never mind. Well, at least I think we agree that they are remarkable as they are beautiful. Without a doubt. A busy planet to rule the world! <laughs> this is Plankton. He's based on an actual plankton called a copepod. You know, Jean-Michel, the little crustacean with two antenna and one red eye. There certainly are enough of them to rule the world. Billions and billions of them. They can be miniature plants, phytoplankton, or animal zooplankton. Your character, the copepod, is definitely an animal and he's been eating his greens. Plant plankton are tiny and at the very bottom of the food chain, the grass of the open sea. Zooplankton can be tiny or big like jellyfish. From what I understand, the word plankton is Greek for drifter. Yes, but the most part, Plankton are drifters transported by currents, but some can swim all the way from the depth to the surface. 
Well, what's fascinating to me is that some animals are plankton when they're very young, you know, larvae, and then they grow up to be larger animals or plants and are no longer plankton. That's true. I really love how some of them look like they come from another planet, too. Especially the gelatinous zooplankton, perhaps the most delicate life form in the ocean. Practically living water that even glows in the dark. Living water, I like that. Well, some of my favorites are the ones that make webs. Well, my favorites are the ones that look like they're from another planet. Strange as they may be, they're like us, resident of planet Earth. Hello! I like money! I see, you also created a crab character. Let me guess, does he have a crabby personality? Almost, he's more salty than crabby. This is Mr. Krabs, and like real crabs, he's very opportunistic. Well, right away, you can see that crabs are like big insects. Their skeleton is on the outside, so if they want to grow, they shed their outer skeleton, and voila, a newer, bigger one is underneath like getting a new suit. In the case of Mr. Krabs, a cheap suit. They walk sideways and they can live on land and in the sea. So whether it's high tide or low tide, they're pretty much covered, right? Funny you say that, Steve. Some love to decorate their bodies with seaweed, rocks, live sponges and anemones, even trash. Mr. Krabs decorates himself with dollar bills. Hermit crabs need more protection, so they look for empty shells like snail shell to move into. They carry their home on their back wherever they go. Hey, there's a crab eating a sponge. And doesn't seem to mind the bad taste. There are really all sorts of crabs, big and small, fat, and even some with very thin, spidey long legs. Hmm, I'll have to use this one for a future character design. You could call it stringy, skinny. Hey, I'll, can I use that? Sure. Oh no, this is terrible. Who's gonna sign my paycheck? Jean-Michel, this is Squidward the Octopus. He's SpongeBob's grumpy next-door neighbor. I like the octopus for this character because they have such a large, bulbous head. And Squidward thinks he's an intellectual, so of course, he's gonna have a large, bulbous head. But he only has six legs. An octopus has eight. I knew you were gonna catch that. You know, it was really just simpler for animation to draw him with six legs instead of eight. <laughs> well, both squid and octopi are cephalopods, meaning head foot. They are the intelligent masters of camouflage. They have excellent eyesight, squeezed through tiny holes, and some use ink or venom for defense. We've tried to do jokes with Squidward releasing ink in the show, but it always looks like he's pooping his pants. More than I needed to know, Steve. I'm sorry. They can get big. An octopus can be 500 pounds. According to researchers, a giant squid can be 60 feet long, yet we've never filmed them. And both the squid and the octopus can be small, like the market squid. They are the example of diversity being about as weird as any group of critters in the sea. I love the weird ones. Hey, isn't that a cuttlefish? Now they have more than eight tentacles, right? They have 10, actually. Like the octopus and cuttlefish can change their looks depending on their environment. They have a siphon for pumping water, which they use for jet propulsion, just like an octopus. Wow, this doesn't look good. Is this the end of SpongeBob? No, but he'll be more cautious the next time he stops for ice cream. Huh. He's being tricked by one of the most bizarre creatures in the sea. Bizarre and sneaky. And ugly, but I adore frogfish. I'll let you in on the secret, Steve. My nickname is Frogfish. I'm sorry to hear about that. Well, these guys have a big mouth. The squimmy thing is a lure, a built-in fishing pole. Frogfish have perfect camouflage, so they find a good hiding spot, lure the fish in, and whammo, dinner is served. Well, in the movie, we changed the worm lure to ice cream sundaes because that's what attracted SpongeBob and Patrick. So what gave you the idea to use a frogfish? While we were making the movie, I saw one while snorkeling on a reef in Hawaii. It was hiding out on this big yellow sponge, believe it or not. I watched it creep along on its little feet, and I thought, I've got to use this in a movie. It's so fascinating. They really don't like to swim. They're simply not made for it. So they use their fins as feet to walk short distances, and at time, even gallop. Gallop? I didn't see that when I saw one. It's true. They may seem clumsy and awkward, but at the right moment, they can really move. Well, they may seem ugly, 
but there is something that is truly disturbing under the sea. And what's that? The wastelands in the ocean, places that were once vibrant and thriving with life. Ha, huh. you mean bleached and dying coral reefs. You know, SpongeBob, there's a lesson to be learned from all of this. What's that, Patrick? I mean, look how beautiful the ocean can be. Life and color everywhere. It's too bad that humans have had such a negative impact on it. Yes, it's sad and it's a problem. If we don't do more to understand and care for coral reefs, we may lose them for good, possibly in less than 30 years. Look at that, the reef has lost its color. When the coral reef looks bleached, it's sick. It's lost the ability to work like a city under the sea. It cannot support life. It's sad but true. Human activities damage the reef. It looks like someone dumped sand on the reef here. That's called sedimentation, caused by runoff from land. It smothers the reef. Eventually, our life will be affected by our poor treatment of the ocean. But we humans can do something about this, right? Right. It's not too late to protect the ocean. Thank you, stranger! Now this is one character I certainly know. Unlike you, Jean-Michel, this diver is not such a nice guy. He's the villain in the movie, modeled after an old-fashioned hard hat diver from the late 1800s. As you know, they didn't swim, they walked, and must have looked like towering giants to anything living on the ocean floor. Diving in the early days was very dangerous. To explore the ocean, the first step was to put on a thick suit and a heavy helmet and pump air down to the diver. It was difficult, but the connection between humans and the ocean is critical, and to better understand and protect it, we must explore. Our lives depend upon it. Uh, what's up with Mr. Stripes here? He's demonstrating the second step. To put the air needed to breathe in a tank the diver could take with him. The equipment was uncomfortable, movement was difficult, and the air supply was limited. But then my father and Emile Gagnon invented scuba and everything changed. Divers today enjoy advanced diving equipment that makes diving and working underwater safer and more comfortable. We now use different mixtures of gases to breathe so we can safely go deeper for longer periods of time. Technology has allowed the human race to embrace the underwater world and become a man-fish. My team uses highly advanced systems, some that make no bubbles, so we can get up close to marine life. Our masks are designed so we can talk with each other underwater and with our crew above the surface. Wow, this is a serious dive suit here. That's the newt suit. It works like a submarine, allowing the person inside to go deep for long periods of time. Then there is Deep Worker, just one of many subs that make deep ocean exploration possible. Well, thanks a lot, Jean-Michel. You've really taught us a lot today, and I hope you enjoyed the tour of Bikini Bottom. Well, thank you, Steve. Let's talk soon, OK? Is it clear now? Yes. I still wish we could go to Bikini Bottom. Well, the ocean is full of wonderful places. As my fact, we're going there now. You want to join? Yeah! Let's go. Hey, somebody looking for a Bikini Bottom? We already found them on TV. Come on, man, get with it, will you? 